Oh, y'all got the 10K likes. Good. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys. So, um, like I said, uh, these are very, these are two intellectual um, beings. These are two people that I have respect for. Um, Danny and I have some stuff in the works right now as we speak. Marty and I are going to do some content because Marty's always coming to my platform, providing great content um, for me, and I appreciate his contributions. Um, it's 1127. Um, so, guys, I'm going to give them until... Um, I'm going to give them until 11.45 tops. Um, Y'all will enjoy this, okay? Um, so, Danny, go ahead um, and get it started. Danny, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, Marty, just to kind of introduce myself to you a little bit here um, and to give you a little insight into where I come from, I'm a LCSW and an uh, ASEC certified sex therapist. So a lot of my education and background in present day work is around sex and relationships. So this is a topic I'm very comfortable in. Um, and so one of the things that I just wanted to like address right off the back is that uh, statement that you talked about, uh, about oxytocin. It is a, a very commonly misused piece of information. There is a lot of research and studies on it but it's kind of been broken down and communicated in a way that is perpetuating some of these ideas. Yes, oxytocin is present during orgasm. It's present during orgasm with both men and women. Yes, oxytocin is present and, and correlated with pair bonding. It is also correlated with pleasure. You release oxytocin when you eat a snack that you like. The, there, It is not true, clinically speaking, that you the more people that you have sex with, the more your pair bonding or your ability to pair bond decreases. That would that if that were true, anytime people in a marriage had sex and had orgasms, they would be less and less likely to be bonding with each other, which is not true. Sex is often used in pair bonding for both genders. Um, well, there's more than one gender, but we'll get into that another time. Uh, but it is not something that like diminishes your ability to maintain a long term relationship. So that is just factually incorrect. Um, and that's not something that I'm up to debate about. That is just the, the truth of what that research shows. And there's a, a couple of other things that you mentioned in the behavioral realm that I also disagree with. Honestly, I can't remember them because they were a little bit ago. Um, but I just kind of wanted to get that out there. And a statement that I keep hearing you say is that, you know, nature is sexist. Nature is not sexist. Society is sexist. We have kind of taken these concepts and and created them where we are now and you keep saying like you know that this is reality this is your reality this is the world in the system in which you are functioning but there are plenty of systems here in in the u.s as that's kind of where i'm assuming we're talking about that do not function based off of those same sets of rules especially a lot of the worlds that i work in and participate in uh so to say to say that like this is just how it is and you have to deal with it is not at all true you just have to find the system and the set of rules that work for you. And if you want that traditional set of rules, you're more than welcome to stay there. But to make people feel that they have to and they have no other options and, you know, they have to fit into your rules is just simply inaccurate. Everyone will find the people that are attracted to them, that have the same values as them. And you don't have to limit yourself if these are things that you just are not agreeing on. Yeah, I definitely, like I said, I think people who have similar values should find one another and deal with one another. If you're a man who has traditional values, deal with a woman who has traditional concepts around virtue. Uh, if a woman doesn't have traditional concepts around uh, virtue as it's been, a, a, as it is understood and valued by men who uh, uh, have a traditional value system for approaching relationships, dating, marriage, etc., then you should avoid those women. You know, you can't do anything about the fact that there are men who want to run amok through the whole world and smash everything in sight and that there are women who want to do the same. I think that it's problematic that we have these dominant narratives, though, that try to push these certain things. Right. And they push the opposite of traditionalism as if pushing the opposite of traditionalism is a freedom from traditionalism, but it isn't. It's a competing idea set. So the opposite of someone who says, hey, body count matters is the is somebody saying that it doesn't. Somebody saying that it doesn't isn't a freedom from the concept of body count because it it is something that is still evaluated. It's just whether or not you place a value on it where you disqualify someone for future marriage 
or a relationship or et cetera on it or not. And then I, I find a lot of times uh, that, um, you, you know, you, you there were a couple of things that you said, but I want us to stay on topic, like the gender thing. You know, I understand that uh, it, and it leads into something greater. You said social constructs that are for the society that we are in now. OK, so does that mean that you don't believe that uh, female sexual promiscuity isn't something that has historically predominantly been important in society going back through time? You feel like this is a recent construct that is being that was created and is being pushed to maintain the frame of this society. Is that what you're uh, saying? No, I, I think women's uh, sexuality has been monitored vastly throughout history, but mostly because of a desire to control women, a desire to treat them as property, which they were for many, many years throughout our history, a desire to assure lineage before we had, you know, the medical testings that we do today to assure like economic succession of things. Women's sexuality has been policed for many, many, many reasons throughout history. I think what's happening presently is that we are seeing that kind of breakdown and no longer wanting to function under that system and we're kind of getting this this discourse around that because a lot of women don't want to be bound to that anymore so some people want to keep sticking to some of those values and a lot of people are starting to break away from it right so then you want to revise the initial statement that you said about it being a recent social construct correct i don't think i said recent social construct but the, wh I, that's what yeah. I took from your presentation of it. That is something that's a social construct that is important to people now. I believe those were the words that you used, but I'm saying that it's I, always I mean, been it's important. Been, it's me. been important historically, yes, but it is also, okay. it's so, still present today. We're still dealing with some of these things, yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're, I, I think that we're dealing with them on some level because there's been this agenda that, you know, sexual promiscuity is, has a zero sum value to how a society operates. And the functionality of that society and the outcomes in that society. And I think that that is, you know, untrue and irresponsible. Right. I don't I, I do recognize that men don't have the same standards for body count that women do. But on my channel, I do preach and teach to men that they should move with character and integrity and that they shouldn't be out trying to slay the world. Uh, so I'm somebody who do do I, I do believe that body count matters for a man. But it doesn't matter in the same way that it matters for a woman, right? Because there's a social impact for a woman in terms of her dating options. And for men, there, there's that, that social impact is multiples less. And so it's just not something we have to place the same value on. And when you talk about double standards, we aren't the same. We are two different sexes. And because we are two different sexes, we have two different uh, ways that uh, different ways that people uh, associate value to us when it comes to interpersonal relationships, marriage, dating. And, and, and that is not something that we have gotten past or evolved around. It's something that women, in my experience, seem to talk about as if we're already living in this future that they're speaking of, but they're getting outcomes that are not consistent with that being true. They're still getting outcomes that are consistent with the fact that things are the way that they are and that for the most part, men who do want marriage, right? If you're a woman who does want marriage, but you don't care about the fact that men associate uh, your value as a wife, not as a human being, right? As a wife to the discernment that you've used in allowing people to have access to your body, then, uh, you know, the, these women for the most part are not getting the types of outcomes they want. Because you had talked about, hey, they're Spaces you move through where guys love to be cucked. They like to have their wives screw other people and, and sit up and chat about it. You know, there are guys who like to be kicked in the balls. There's something called sounding where you stick a, a glass tube down your urethra. There's all types of wild shit. But to pretend as if these folks make up a significant portion of the society or culture or that the exception that they represent can be used to disprove the rule of how people who want marriage move I, with somebody who has as intelligent as you, I don't know how you are able to do that because I know that you know that that is a, a small sector and not the vast majority. And to paint them as two equals and and their weight and value in society is, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's misleading to other people who are listening that may not have your level of education. 
I, yeah. And I, I think a big piece of that is that just because you do not see them as the majority does not mean that they aren't a very large number. Sex, culturally speaking, is something that is very hidden, especially sex that is kind of going against the societal standard. So it is not that these people are actually that much of a minority. It's that they are not expressing and talking about it outwardly the way that we do about other things. Sexual liberation like comes in a, in a lot of, of different forms, but I, this really does apply to just about every like the human experience is incredibly diverse we don't have to sit here and say hey this is a double standard and we recognize that because you're right there are absolutely double standards currently at play for a lot of people but you move through that by challenging that and by by having these conversations and by changing it and through that you find other people who don't ascribe to you know those same values and that community grows and grows every year you know the sex positive community grows and grows every year the fact that marriage and, and how we view and see and value marriage is changing every year. You know, th this is evidence that these conversations are actually moving us away. And while it might be the majority, maybe where you are, it is not the majority in every location, even throughout the U.S. or every city. So it's very, very like kind of geographical in a lot of senses. Well, I've done I've done a lot of traveling and believe it or not, you know, I've had, you know, lots of exposure to people. Senses. Well, I've done I've done a lot of traveling and believe it or not, you know, I've had, you know, lots of exposure to people who live in the lifestyle. Right. Folks who have submissives, people who are doms, professional dom lifestyle. Right. Folks who have submissives, people who are doms, professional doms, uh, people who, uh, you know, have in all different types of arrangements, you know, poly relationships. I'm not a very judgmental person. But I do talk about these things in such a way where I add a value, a, a gradation, right, if you will, a, sta a ladder of what is best. Because at the end of the day, there are some people who are concerned with the outcomes that we're getting in the community as a, as a whole, as opposed to just whether or not you feel great about getting sex or, or, or how you like your sex. And if you can have it, like some of some folks, they are, uh, uh, they attach more value to the outcomes we're getting. Right. So like mm -hmm. I look at the crisis we're having in the black community in particular of all of the children that are not being brought into the world, into a stable environment. And I associate that with this push with uh, to, to unhinge or to separate, right. To delineate, uh, uh, sex uh, from relationship. And so now you have all the sex that is happening outside of relationship and you have all these kids that are be born from one night stands, meeting in a bar, you know, all, all of this stuff, situationship, side links, sneaky links. Now, uh, there was always a sector of children that were born, you know, that way, right? But uh, it's a growing sector. In our community, it's a, the dominant way that children are, that black people are brought into the world. And then you've got, you know, more children who are actually being aborted in the black community than are being born. And then the ones that are being born, 72 out of 100 of them are being born in situations where there aren't two people who agree to bring that child into the world. And so I look at what that's doing to our community, even though that may make somebody feel great because they're sex positive. When you look at the total system that you live within and uh, underneath then you look at the impact of it on that and you say, well, you know, obviously we want people to be as free as they can be, but there's a balance of freedom and restriction that is necessary for us to monitor if we're going to have a society that works. We all count on the, the life support system of the societies that we live in to underpin our <laughs> lives, the water we drink, the lights being on, all of these different things. And when we move from a completely liberal standpoint, liberal means that I put the individual over the group, right? We take the individual, we put them over the government, we put them over the society, we put them over the group. When we move with that mindset in, in, in total, right? You can have a sector of folks that move that way, that's fine. But when you have an entire society of people who move that way, you see the society begins to come apart because, you know, what does a man used to justify getting up at four o'clock in the morning to deal with somebody's trash as a, as a garbage man at 6 a.m. 
right? It, it, to drive to their house and deal with their garbage. You know, the majority of people who are garbage are, are garbage people, right? Work in, the, in waste uh, disposal are men. They justify it because they have a family to feed. So what happens when you remove the family from those people? Well, you have all of these, you have skilled trades, which have been a declining area of involvement for people to get into for employment, which we need. We need electricians. We need construction workers. We need these people. And they, you're removing the, the primary people who do that are men. Women don't want to sit on top of a roof and swing a hammer in the summer. Right. So when you remove the incentive to do that, there's a social impact on it. And I feel like folks who kind of move on that liberal side completely ignore that. They just are really it, it's it, it's a hedonism. It stops and starts with what makes me happy. And I don't have to consider anything outside of myself because they were born into a system that they don't really have to contribute to. Mm -hmm. OK, and I, I would kind of challenge, I think, actually, you know, liberal policies are much more collectivist than Danny, conservative. Danny, Danny, Danny. I'm sorry, Danny, one second. Hey, mm -hmm. um, sir, sir, Silky, do you just drop that galaxy? Thank you, brother. God <laughs> bless you. I hope you manifest whatever it is you're trying to manifest in life before the end of this year. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Danny. Yeah. So again, I, I think liberal policies are actually much more about community and care for the collective and conservative policies are the ones that it, it's my way and, and, you know, a little bit more individualist. Uh, so interesting that you kind of perceive that differently. And I think it, when I absolutely understand, like wanting to understand the societal impacts, especially those, you know, very connected to your community. But when I'm hearing about like, you know, people doing sanitation jobs and those things like there are reasons for these declines a lot of these things are actually not so connected to sex and like breakdowns in families and and abortion rates and kids being born into homes that are not stable are so much less connected to the fact that people are becoming more sexually liberated and so much more connected to a massive amount of systems and policies that negatively affect those communities. I think also part of the sex positive movement is not only in, in you know, having the sex that you want, but being able to understand, to articulate, to negotiate boundaries, to, you know, to have a lot of communication around sex and also safe sex practices or safer sex practices is a huge part of being sex positive, which actually then decreases you know, unwanted children, sex positivity is a lot about education around sex, which decreases unwanted pregnancies. So if anything, sex liberation is probably doing good things for these communities. It's not about, you know, breaking down the nuclear family. It's about having people have the agency and education to be able to communicate the things that they want in their life and feel that they can articulate that to the people that they might be getting naked with. Uh, so it's just interesting that we kind of see those very differently all right yeah. time out, time out, time, time out. one second marty um it is 11 45 um danny danny listen you know I, I i always appreciate you we got things in the works right now danny just please give your last mm -hmm. closing words on you know just the topic in general and then i'm gonna have uh marty give his last closing words and then i i do need to recycle the box so danny please go ahead and give your uh closing words Yep. No, happy to. Um, I think, you know, just kind of having these conversations is very important. I'm happy that we all can kind of come into this forum to do that. At the end of the day, my opinion is always going to be, you know, regardless of what your reality is and where you are, take the time to truly educate yourself and question why you believe the things that you do. Um, and especially if those things make you feel like you are trapped in some box or that if you do these things, you are unvaluable or not wanted or used up and dirty, definitely be questioning those things a lot because there are communities and worlds out there where that is not go that is not the truth. That is not the reality. And uh, we would love to have you. <laughs> Please come over to our side of loving sex pos positivity. And I'm always happy to talk to anyone if they've ever got something going on. Noble, you said we've got some things in the works. So I will be around for more like sex related conversations in the future. Right. That, don't 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 put them on too much game. Danny, I appreciate <laughs> you. I'll, I'll hit you later. Thank you so much. Okay. See ya. All right. Martin, mm -hmm. go ahead, brother. Please give your closing words. I think it, it was refreshing to talk to somebody that we could respectfully disagree to everybody who's in the chat that's had conversation with me before. That's what it sounds like when you actually have something to say instead of some feelings. Uh, but 
uh, to Danny's, uh, you know, points and, and more so to my own. Right. We're living in a world right now where I think, you know, folks are trying to disconnect you from what the reality and outcomes associated with your actions are. You know, some of the points that Danny was making, I think, are more based in what they feel the effects of it should be and how they want things to be in the future. And they're kind of projecting that onto the world that we're living in now. And when you take on those ideas, you're getting outcomes that are not better. You're not getting the things that you women who are who don't place a value on their body when it's it's kind of like this. And, and if I were to give advice to men and I said, hey, fellas, only date tens and make them pay for the first three dates, that would ignore what women want. And so the advice would be bad advice. Now, it sounds good. Man, I'm only going to date tens and they're going to pay for all the dates. But it's not going to work because the women that you're talking about won't do that with you. They won't do it for you. They're not going to give you any attention. They're not going to give you the time of day. So, ladies, men who want marriage, marriage is a traditional concept, especially in this environment that we're living in now with a court system where whether you agree with it or not, men as a group see themselves as heavily disadvantaged in the court system as it pertains to family court and divorce court, right? So the only men who are marrying now are men where that is valuable to them as a value set or religious, I, a re something religious to do. There are so many men online who are like, I'm not marrying anybody. The juice ain't worth the squeeze, right? So if you do want to be married, if that is important to you, right? Then you have to care about what men want who are married. Now, you can think these men are delusional. We think y'all are delusional. Ladies, we think y'all are nuts, okay? We still have to know in which ways you are nuts and what shit you are going to respond to. We don't get to ignore it and think we're going to get sex anyways. We have to know what to say, even if we're just telling you what you want to hear so we can get into your draws. We have to know what you want. You want to ask, you want to catch a fish? Ask a fisherman, not another fish. So ladies, if you want a husband, you have to think about what men want who want to marry. And what men want who want to marry, there are some men who don't give a shit about body count. 100%, there are men like that. They are harder to find for marriage. The, the, the average guy doesn't care about your body count, ladies, because the average guy does not want to marry you. Right. He wants to sleep with you. Right. And for the women who said, you know, hey, um, why do men cheat on their wives with hoes if they care so much about body count? Because sex is total. Let me tell you something. A lot of y'all husbands that cheated on y'all, believe it or not, they were trying to save the marriage. You by yourself was w without a side chick. It was driving them crazy because it was too tough to deal with your ass. And so the side chick was so that they could keep you. Men typically don't leave their wives for other women, especially women who are hoes. You give your ring to one woman and then you may have your sex with somebody else. I'm not agreeing with that. I'm not advocating for that. But men do not leave their wives for hoes. They don't do it, not for the other women. So just because somebody is having sex with you doesn't mean that they value you. OK, so I think that this becomes very, very, very confusing for women, because when y'all go into y'all echo chambers and you talking to other women, they say all the shit you want to hear and none of it works. All you can get is some dates, some handbags, maybe get flown out and catch some dick. But in terms of getting a ring, a commitment from a man, I'm sorry, ladies, you need to talk to a man about that because we're the ones who give the rings. Once you give me access to your body, once I'm a guy that you want, once th that guy is the one that he's the one that chooses when y'all boyfriend and girlfriend, he's the one that chooses when he's going to propose to you. Y'all not out here proposing to ninjas. Fuck out of here with that. So if you don't care what these men want, if that doesn't matter to you, then just like the man, just like me telling men, you can date tens and make them pay for the first three dates. Those men will be without dates. Your ass will be without a ring. You'll be in a six, seven year side link situationship with somebody. And for ladies who have lived that life, the reason why is because you're, you, you are disconnected from the reality of men. 
You've been listening to too many liberal women with these liberal degrees and shit that can put the words together. It sounds flowery, flowery, but when you put it, when the rubber meets the road, the dog don't hunt. The shit don't work. That's what I'll close on. And I did really appreciate her. I hope she doesn't feel like I tried to drag or come after her afterward. Danny was very well. And I'd love to have more conversation with her uh, so she can press against my ideas and I can press against hers. And Noble, thank you so much for having me up. Of course, brother. Marty, I always appreciate you, brother. Hey, hey, you, you, you know how we rock. I appreciate you, bro. You have a great night.